Hey, what's going on, crew? Your boy is back. I want to break down Friday, November 24th. And I uh, brought back some tools. I got the DVP tool and I got the usage tool. All right, my lineup is pretty much set. But I just want to break down the slate, chop it up with some of you YouTube fans, and um, get through this rather quickly. Um, before I start, I want to wish everybody that follows me, everybody who hates me, loves me, support me, disapprove me, whatever. If you know me and I know you or we encounter each other, I want to wish you, your family, happy holiday season, happy Thanksgiving. If you celebrate Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Rosh Hashanah, whatever you went to, man, I, would, I just want it to be a safe, healthy, prosperous holiday season for everyone out there. All right? Full of peace, full of blessings, and just full of love. We need more love in this world. So with that being said, let's get into tonight's tomorrow's night's slate. Um, let's check and see who we got with us here um, on YouTube. We got our boy Jer Jermar, the number one critic. He goes, bro, you gained my faith. Nice lineup the other night. Are oh, you talking about the um, the Tuesday into Wednesday? Yeah, we did good with that one. That Bledsoe Middleton late news kind of crippled the slate because – I looked at my lineups, and I'm, even though, you know, they didn't really do good for me, minus that Bledsoe news, we, man, I got, what, a couple 270s win on most nights, especially in triple-ups, 285, 279. So all my lineups were pretty solid. It was just that um that Bledsoe news kind of threw things off a little bit and handicapped the slate. Middleton went off for like 70. Bledsoe went off for 60. It's hard to win if you don't got both of them in your lineup, so... That's what happened there. I'm not, I'm not even upset about it because the night before that, when everything was all normal and copacetic, we did very nice. So you're welcome, Jermar. Just keep coming. Keep sharing your thoughts. Let's keep debating these slates, and we'll do well every time. Quincy, what's up? How you doing? Tori J, happy Turkey Day. Same to you, Tori. Let's get right into it, though, because it's, it's, what, almost 10, nine games? Let's get into it. Let's mess it up. Let's mess it up. Atlanta versus New York. The reason that I chose now to come on is because I was waiting for some news. Like we got some news coming out of Atlanta. We know that um, Muscala is definitely out. Babbitt is definitely out. I live in New York, and I um, I watch Knicks games. And Cantor don't get a lot of run because of his defensive liability and his lack of rebounding skills. He gives up a lot of offensive rebounds and – He's a good offensive player. He can score and whatnot, but the Knicks feel like they have that in Tim Hardaway Jr. and Paul Zingas or whatever. So they bring in these guys like um, um, they bring in um, the swing man. Lance Thomas get good, healthy runs. Uh, McDermott, and they love O'Quinn. They love to bring in O'Quinn gets healthy minutes. If I click on him, mid-teens, but then Lance Thomas gets minutes. Mid teens, so between O'Quinn, Lance, Tom McDermott, got to get his shit. He gets twenties and thirties. Between those three guys, it takes away a lot of minutes from Cantor. If we look at Cantor minutes, um, some games you'll see twenty four and twenty four, and then um, I don't know how he got thirty two minutes this last game. It's, that's that's kind of strange for Cantor. This game was a blowout, so I could see that. But normally, when I'm watching the games, I'm seeing twenty four minutes, low twenties. Him not getting that many rebounds. And then when he do come out and start grabbing some rebounds, they'll let him, they'll leave him in. But I don't like Cantor, and I like people that go against him. With that being said, Deadman got some of my interest. But then when I started looking at Deadman, he he's not getting minutes in the thirties. He's getting in the twenties, the twenty fours, or whatever have you. I pull up my DVP tool last five games for DraftKings. Let's check out DVP for um, bigs. So if we look at centers and power forwards, let's start with centers. Um. In the last five games, it says stay away from centers. Knicks do well. How about power forwards? Knicks still down there. So power forwards and um, centers against the Knicks could be ill-advised, I guess, um, according to our DVP tool. But just the simple fact that um, there's no real backup. Plumlee's not in the rotation. Um, Deadman is – so – 
Ilya Sova is not starting. They're starting. Uh, let me clear this out. That's my lineup. But I'll clear it. They're starting Collins, all right? And Collins is getting big minutes. He's playing 38, 36 minutes a game. And the trend is whenever you see a 30 next to his minutes, you're going to see 30-something next to his fantasy points. He did it against Houston, a very tough team to get rebounds and, and, and do well from. He didn't even score. He still got into the 30s. Cleveland, another team that big supposed to be. So if we look at our DVP tools and we look at um, he starts at power forward, right? Cleveland is up there, and where's Houston? Houston, Houston, Houston is even supposed to be better than the Knicks according to this DVP. I, you know, I use it quite a bit, but I'm not really. I, I don't re totally rely on those, but just for some reference, I use it. Um, but we see that Detroit, another team with Drummond, he's still getting 30 points when he gets over 25 minutes. Boston, we just saw Whiteside struggle against them. He still got six times value against them, 30 points. San Antonio, Clippers, these are teams that have good big men that bigs don't normally do well against. And Collins getting minutes in the 30s is a lock. You got to lock in Collins. You got to feel good about it. Every player on my team. I need confidence that they can make me six times value. If I don't have a good, confident feel that they can't get six times value, I don't pick them. And if I get six times value for all my players, that's 300 in the lineup. Collins is going to exceed that tomorrow, guys. Collins will exceed that. You got to pick up some Collins and do it with confidence, okay? Shooter is one of my buddies, my go-to guys. Um, for 6,600, I do believe he can get six times value, but... The upside at this point is what we're looking for as well. So the six times value is pretty much there. We could say rather consistent. Shooter is one of my boys. But as I considered it today and I, I did some more analysis, there's not too much upside with Shooter in New York tomorrow. They said it's a good matchup, the DVP um, for point guards. In the last five games, got the Knicks where – Not as great as the season long is suggested. So season long. Oh, I don't even know how they got the Knicks as green on DraftKings, but our DVB tools saying that the Knicks is not that. Uh, I guess they're in the top 10. But Schroeder tomorrow doesn't scream um, seven, eight times value to me. So I'm going to use some caution with Schroeder. Um, then we moving on. Bazemore is someone else I like to pick on, but Courtney Lee, I like his defense. I don't think Bazemore is going to catch rack on Courtney Lee. Plus, Bazemore, for some reason, the streaks kind of got rough. Maybe it's a home away thing. No, because he does bet on the road, but um, we, I'm looking at games where he should have done better. No, Pat Beverly, he's only giving me 22. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that. So, Bazemore, Prince, these guys are false hopes. I just like Collins, honestly, man. I don't want to waste too much time. Then we go to New York. The point guard situation is messy. He just wanted to leave it. I know it's Dennis Schroeder situation, but there's two point guards that split the minutes equally, okay? Um, Nick of the Patina, he'll come in and get you somewhere in the teens. And, you know, he's been uh, – that rookie is just not that great. I know they wish they had Dennis Smith, but whatever. I'm not a Nick fan. I'm not even going to speak on that. Jared Jack could get 30 minutes and get you 13, get 25, and then eh, – I think Jared Jack can expose Dennis Schroeder. Am I going to pick Jack? Um, no, because I got better picks than that, that I don't want to start punting and gambling my money. What I do like, though, and if I can't stress it to you, you want to pair up both of these guys, all right? Courtney Lee is $4,600. If you multiply six times four, you get 24. That's his season average, okay? He's averaging six times value. He's in the best matchup in the league right now, okay? He is in the best matchup. He is DFS most underrated player. Nobody looks at him, but look at his numbers, all right? For 4,700, he gives us 37 against a very good defense in Toronto, and his price goes down $100, guys. You see that? Clippers, 26, four times value, all right? See, Toronto here, he's struggling to blow out. This is what it's supposed to look like. But let's keep going. Utah, 32. Cleveland, 26. Sacramento, 29. Orlando, 23. This guy lives in the mid-20s for 4K. I feel so good about him, man. I just feel like he, he won't let me down. All right? And then um, let's look and see about um, Collins and Courtney Lee when it comes to usage. Let's see if they're on page one. 
Collins is not, and Lee wouldn't be, because Lee doesn't really get usage. But check out this guy that I like. His name is Hardaway. But well, he's not on page one. That's weird, because Hardaway has the ball in his hand quite a bit. Is he on page two? Nope. Oh, wait, wait a minute. He's on page two, usage, Tim Hardaway. Um, I don't know how he's so far down because I watch the games and I'm telling you, they're using him more than, than it shows. He has the best matchup. Another guy, he's, in the last 10 games, he's averaging 44 fantasy points. 44 fantasy points. He's only 6K. So, I mean, we only expect 36 to be happy and we're getting 44. How could you turn that down? He went to Toronto. He put up 61. Um now, someone might say I'm chasing, but what? Three out of the last four games, he put up acceptable numbers, 61, 32, 43. If we go back, another 56, 43. So every now and then, he'll give us a little um, a stinger that we don't like, like a 13. But that's the only one there that I would say will kill my lineup. 27, I'll be upset about it, but it won't kill my lineup. And if you got 60, if in the last 10 games you, you were 40 and up, how many times? One, two, three, four times, and you and you should, you put up 50, 60 twice, and that's your upside, and your floor is about thirty for six k. I'm willing to take you as a player, especially when you're going against that Atlanta Hawks, okay? Who has no direction whatsoever, who just sucks. All right, so that's how I feel about the two Knicks that I got in my lineup. Uh, I feel pretty good about both of them, and then uh, that's about it. Porzingis has been kind of taken for 9K, it's not worth it. We need 50s for that, and he hasn't really been in the 50s consistently. Tim Hardaway is starting to take over, guys. Um, That's his team, and that's how I feel about that game. All right? Let me see what y'all talking about, man. Um, Told you Middleton would bring home the money. Yo, I knew that, and if you saw my video yesterday, you know, it's a kid on, you, on Twitter that I kind of been working with, and I gave him the lineup with. Middleton and Bledsoe, he it was over three hundred and he won a lot of money. I took him from twenty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars in four days, just to cause just just to kind of use as an experiment for me at least. I'm just showing like, and for some reason I took Middleton out. I don't know why I would do that when if Middleton does good with Antetokounmpo, what did I think he would do without Antetokounmpo? I don't know what the heck I was thinking. It was the stupidest thing I ever did. The dumbest, most stupid thing I could ever do, Quincy. I did it. I want to play Monroe, but makes me nervous. Yeah, I don't want to be nervous with my plays. Monroe, I have the same feel about. I like the triple up strategy, too. Been winning more money more consistently. I told you. I told you. Stop trying to take down America. Just take down smaller slates, do it consistently, and you come out ahead. Are you sure about Westbrook? Maybe we can find lower point guard. Now nah, I'm sure about Westbrook. Reggie Jackson is not touching Westbrook tomorrow. Westbrook, I like Westbrook, especially with the line that I got around him. That head-to-head, -head, how was it? Oh, 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 I'm happy you asked that. So let's check that out, right? Um, that head-to-head, -head, I killed it. I beat her, all right? But apparently, whoever that is, it's a big shock in the business. It's like up there with um, up there with Chipotle, you know what I mean? Um, let me show you that one. Head-to-head, yeah. -head, I, I beat her right here. I beat and I won. So I'm looking at tomorrow's games, right? And I'm looking for another head-to-head. -head and, and she's on the list again. So I'm thinking, should I just keep targeting it? Because her picks always look crazy to me. A couple of times I beat her, her, her picks were all crazy to me. So I open up this, I don't know, how, uh, this this tool. And look, like entry, $10,000, one person, Oh, it was Chipotle earlier. Hold on. Uh, somebody probably took the challenge, but these sharks, look, Chipotle got a $10,000 contest. He wants to go head to head with somebody for $10,000. He's crazy. But nonetheless, I clicked on the $500 contest because I feel a little brave. And look who's there. My best friend. My best friend is there. I should take that flipping challenge, but I don't want to get too cute. I went back to the $100 challenge right here, and she's there too. She was in here. Let me see right here. Music girl. So I could keep picking on her because I know I keep beating her. Whoever that is, even if if it is a her, which I'm I probably is a dude, but whoever it is, he or she, I could keep picking on that person and keep beating them and keep winning hundred dollars every night. I'll be happy with that. But 
I'm not gonna get too greedy. I'm gonna chill for right now. Keep the street going. I'm trying. I still don't trust Colin. Dude hacks too much. Nah, I trust Collins. Against Porzingis, I want Collins. What do you think about Marcus Smart? I don't really want bench players. That's why I came off D-Wade. I'm not messing with the bench players. I'm looking for starters who I trust. Oladipo, I, I thought about it. His price tag makes me nervous, though. His upside is there. He's getting too expensive. He's like 9K. I, I can't pay that for Oladipo right now. Daniel Sanchez says, yo, what up? Happy Thanksgiving. I played the lineup in a triple up the other day, and there were like five of the same lineups. LOL. Did you win? That's the question. Did you win? See, when I never see my lineup in my triple ups because I'm smart. What I do is I enter the night before and I make sure it fills up before I put out my last lineup. You know what I mean? And I, and I play the higher ones too, the $50, the 25 A lot of people, y'all get cheap. Y'all playing these 5 and $10 lines. I'm up there with the $50, $7,500 triple ups. That's what I'm in. So I don't I don't see a lot of my lineups in those, in those um, triple ups. But... Let's keep it going. Boston versus Orlando. Starting with Boston. Kyrie Irving is a great play. Orlando with point guards is what you want. In the last 10 games, averaging 43, which is what? Five and a half times value. Um, he, he got some 60-point upside for 8K. I like that. But then uh, he got some 30s in there. A lot of 30s. A lot of 30s. Um, when he's good, he's great. But when he's not, he's average. And it makes me nervous. But if you ask me, say, hey, I'm considering Kyrie. You think it's a good consideration? I have more good things than bad things to say about Kyrie Irving in this matchup. They're talking about Kyrie for MVP. So that's enough for that, right? Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, I'm not sold. I don't know why someone would ask me about it. I mean, he hit six times value once in the last 10, twice, three times. Um, and I don't know those circumstances, whether they blowouts or, or what, but I'm not big on Marcus Smart. It's just not – there's no – Security, no confidence, no concrete evidence suggesting Mark is smart. I don't see why anyone would have to go there. You know what I mean? Someone has asked me about Tatum. Now, granted, in the last 10 games, Tatum is averaging 30, which is good. 30 consistently. Look, 30, 30, 30. I didn't even look at that when the person asked me. Um, so he's on, a, he's on a streak. He's playing Orlando. Um, in 27 minutes, he put up 25. And he's playing 30s minutes now. Um, so... Tatum is also good consideration. Again, it's just, for one, it's not someone that I target regularly. He's not in my circle of trust. Um, two, I mean, he's at home. Tatum is good. If you ask me, Tatum and Kyrie I like in this game. Tatum and Kyrie. Al Horford for 7K, still no. Don't pay that. From Boston, I like Tatum and Kyrie, and that's it. Those are the two I would go for. On Orlando side, somebody asked me about Alfred Payton, um, straight chasing. He just had a 41-point game, and they're like, oh, Alfred Payton, don't do that. Look at what happened before that game, 18, 20, 24, 13. You don't want to mess with that. It's kind of risky. That's risky business. Um, Fournier, I still like for that price too, but not against Boston, not struggling. He's, for one, he's struggling. For two, it's against Boston. He already played 35 minutes. He only put up 14. Just don't go there. Why would you go there? Now, I would say that he'll still come out and do well. Aaron Gordon is the only person in this team that I would consider to play. For one, he already put up 40 against this team. For two, he's consistent in the 30s and 40s. And um, I want to say his usage. Let me see. Let's go back to page one. I want to say his, his usage has been up there as well. Um, I don't know. Let me check it out. But Aaron Gordon is the only... Uh, Eric Gordon, yeah. So his usage is not even that great. Aaron Gordon is the only magic that I would consider, though, to say the least. And then Vucevic always in play for that low price. 66 is a little cheap for Vucevic, and he already put up 42 against his team. How many rebounds he pulled down? 10. Rebound 13.7 assists. So Vucevic and Hartford got a similar game. They'll get you assists, rebounds, whatever have you. Let's see his splits, home and away. They're pretty much equal. His season long is about six times value for his price. Uh, I like Vucevic too, but I've been, I've been burned so much time. Man, these 22s and 30s and 17s, you don't want to be on the other end of that. Like, damn, did I really get burned by Vucevic? So, and we just saw Whiteside had a hard time against Boston. So last year, Boston was the team to target for centers, not this year. I feel like this year, Boston with the bigs are clamping down and they're doing a much better job 
especially when they, they try and um, Baines Baines at center. So Hawford don't got to deal with the bigs. He's playing the power forward where he's has a size advantage on guys and he's it, it works better for them. So that's what that's what Boston been doing and it's been working. And I'm not messing around. I'm not challenging it. I'm leaving it alone. All right. That's how I feel about that game. Um It was the drumming lineup. Oh, when he sucked. Man, that's tough. Tyreek Evans has been fire. I always play him. You don't see, you don't use him at all. I do. But when I use him, he don't do well. And then when I leave him alone, he go off. So I think it's one of those love-hate relationships where I just need to leave him alone. But I'll check him out. I, I did glance at him earlier when I was doing my lineup building. So, um, yeah, Aaron Gordon should go overlook. Oh, it's chance for 40. It's a chance for 40, but it's a chance for a dud. But Gordon is solid, man. It's just his price. I don't know. I got I like people more for that price, like TJ Warren. I'll take TJ Warren over Aaron Gordon against Boston. How I feel. Would you take Tatum over Waiters, though? Um That's a good one. Um looking at Tatum numbers. I like Wade. I like Waiters as of late, man. And take they're they're equal. They're both players who hasn't really um, proven themselves to me, but as of late has been doing good. So they're both streaking, and I like both of them equally. So that's it. That's how I feel about that. Vucci main should be see Vucevic is not on Hartford. The Celtics don't start Hartford at center. They start Aaron Baines, and Aaron Baines been tough. So be careful. Be careful when 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 you're picking your lineups because that's how I got burned. If you look at the, the depth chart for the Celtics, they got – nah, that's wrong. It's Baines, and then it's um, Hawford that's starting. Marcus Morris, Jalen Brown, and Irving. Guys like Tatum come off the bench later in the game. Baines don't really get too much minutes, but he starts, and he kind of set the tone for the game. I don't know. I don't want to mess with that too much. Indiana versus Toronto. Point guard, um, Oladipo's hot, man. In the last 10 games, he's averaging 48, which is six times his price. He has 60, 50, 50, three times. But then when he's not going off, he's in the 30s. If you pay 8K and you get 30s, you'll be upset. So this is like a true gamble, and this is like a GPP. I don't, you see, I play triple ups, which is considered for the most part cash games, right? If you're trying to take down one of these slates and you're trying to have the most unique, sneaky lineup, that's when you start taking risks. And you put low price players who can go off or players who can really go off, right? And that's when you'll play Oladipo. For my purposes, I don't play those big tournaments. I do, but I don't really. That's not where my bread and butter is. My bread and butter is on these triple ups. So Oladipo is not somebody I'm considering tomorrow for that purpose. He's too hot and cold, inconsistent. When he goes off, he goes off. But when he doesn't, it's not like – you see, like, DeRozan, I would risk because DeRozan can go off, but when he doesn't, he'll land you around 40 consistently. So with that said, I can say, all right, DeRozan is cool with me. You know what I mean? But Oladipo gives me a funny feeling. And Toronto is a good defensive team. Regardless of the green next to his name, Toronto is a good defensive team. I'm not going to do that. I'm not touching Oladipo tomorrow. Who I do like on this team, though, is – um. Oh, somebody on Atlanta I didn't look at that I do like. Sorry, guys. Let me just go back a little bit. Bogdanovich. Love Bogdanovich. He's averaging 30 in the last 10 games for 4K. He's like another Courtney Lee. You know what I mean? He's getting crazy minutes. He's getting 30s and 40s, mid-20s consistently. His price don't want to go up. So if you don't like Courtney Lee, consider some Bogdanovich. But I didn't mention him, but I don't want y'all to miss out on some good values, man. Bogdanovich is in a tough matchup, but it's a good value. All right? Now, how many Bogdanovich we got in the league? We got one on um, Atlanta, New York, Sacramento. This Bogdanovich is also good consideration. Hold on, what am I doing? I'm looking at the wrong Bogdanovich. Or the right Bogdanovich. Um, Bellinelli, my bad. Bellinelli for 3,800 is who? <laughs> I'm a psycho. Bellinelli is worth some consideration. He can put you 30, 20, 22. 31, 22, 21, 30. Very consistent in the 20s and 30s, and he's only 3,800. 3, so Bellinelli is another GPP kind of guy. If you're looking for some good value, go ahead and pick up some Bellinelli. And then I was talking about Bogdanovich now. It's another Courtney Lee, but I don't like his matchup. I'm not going to risk it. Lance Stevenson, um, 
Same same argument for 3,600. Look at this guy. He lives in a 20. He had one nine game, but look, 24, 25, 23, 24. It's no reason for these guys to still be that low. If you're doing stars and scrubs, those are guys that you want to consider. Lance Stevenson, Bogdanovich, Bellinelli, some good values for tomorrow that I like quite a bit. All right. Um, that's it. I'm not messing with this center no more. He's dead to me. Miles Turner, you, look at it. 17 points. Seriously, dude. You suck. And um, Sabonis coming off the bench. He might get someone. He might not. Who wants to take that gamble? Let's just leave it alone. On to Toronto. Um, Kyle Lowry's been hot, guys. In the end, is, they say it's not a good matchup, but for 8K, he's averaging 45. Again, that's kind of sweet. But three out of the last four games, 50, 50, 50. Still risky, in my opinion. I'm just not too confident in Kyle Lowry. If I get that 28, I'll be pissed. We can call it a bad game and go on and see what else. A lot of 30s. I'm not big on um, Lowry. I think he's just hot. I think we missed it and time to move on, honestly. That's how I feel about that situation. With Delon right out, um, Van Vliet's been getting run, but he hasn't really been doing much with it. Um, nope. DeRozan is who I like. I'll probably go DeRozan before I go Lowry, but I'm just going to leave both alone because of the inconsistencies. CJ Miles, this Norman Powell kid went off the other day, where it seemed like he was. I guess it was just the first half. He was hitting a lot of threes initially. He was went three for four. Most of these came in one quarter. He got hot. I changed the channel, but I, I was looking at him. He's another guy. He can just score in, in a spurt, and then he'll disappear for the rest of the game. Ibaka sucks. I don't know what's going on with him, but it's over for that. Never am I picking Ibaka right now. Shiko, another guy, 3,800. When you look at his productions, 23, 24, 32, and then it just gets bad. So I don't know if he's another one that we missed it and we not to chase it. I, I was just happy that after my line, I didn't have to really chase none of those guys. I was I was able to just chill. Um, and that's it. Valentunas, you just got to get him on the right night, man. If you get him on the right night, you'll be happy. But if you get him on the wrong night, you'll get 21, 18, 13. He'll give you a 30 every now and then. But who wants to? Risk that, right? Again, no, no, no. it's way, way, way too much value to, to be going after some Valanciunas. There is no future in Valanciunas here, guys. Seriously. All right. Cleveland versus Charlotte. On the Cleveland side, I rave about Dwayne Wade. It's for a reason. Dwayne Wade, his usage has been trending up. I wish this had a last five game feature because this is taking the season and not just recently. And um, I wonder if this DVP tool have usage of it. Does it? Value report, lineup, analyzer, save, lineups, advance. There's no usage building here, but this usage thing could be weird because it, it, it might, you know, guys come, going and coming from injuries. Um, it's not going to be too accurate. But Dwayne Wade, as of late, is what you want, man. Um, for 5K, 30, 50, 25, 22, not too convincing, 34. Again, he doesn't start. And bench players, no matter how good they are, their productivity is dependent on dependent on um, game flow. And why risk it, you know? I do like Dwayne Wade. I rave about Dwayne Wade. He's a good play. All right, and then J.R. Smith and Corver. Corver is, if you feel it, if you could feel it, if it's that day, you know that he could go off and get like 30, 40 when he gets hot hitting them threes. But when is he going to get it? We don't know. All right. And then LeBron James is LeBron James. He's never a bad pick. I mean, for six times value that I look for, I need 66 from him. He's only shown me that once in the last 10 games. He had a 90-point game. So the upside is there consistently in the 40s, 50s. But for 11K, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But LeBron just scorched them, didn't he? He put up 57, which is still like, what, five times value? So I'm not crazy about LeBron tomorrow. It's not, I mean, LeBron ownership is always going to be up, but I'm not crazy about LeBron tomorrow. And then Kevin Love, people were saying the other day, oh, you don't have Kevin Love against Brooklyn. You're crazy. He put up, like, less than five times value. I mean, I picked Kevin Love last week, and I would never do it again. The guy disappointed me. You have just so many times you could disappoint me before I have to move on. So it's a dub for that. No Kevin Love for me. All right? And that's pretty much it on this team. Jeff Green, I do like, you know, in certain situations. And this is one of them, man. I think Jeff Green could have a good – if Wade and Jeff Green, I like those bench players. If you're about that life, go ahead and get one of those guys. All right? And then looking at Charlotte, um, 
Once Batum, even if Batum plays, I, which I really don't think he's going to play because why? Why would they play Batum? You know what I mean? Why would they do that? I mean, that's the same shoulder that's been keeping him out. He's a little banged up. I think they'll give him a day off to just chill, monitor him. And even if he does play, Batum has been playing. And even, look, Jeremy Lamb for 5K with Batum, 28, 27, 25. He's just scratching the surface of that six times value that we want, right? Without Batum getting minutes in the 30s, 47. And if we go back to when he was getting in the 30s, 35 minutes, 52. He got 30 minutes here and only put up 22, but that's Boston. Again, Boston, when they're ready, they clamp down the defense. So, yo, I like Lamb for that 5K, man. I'm going to go ahead and just lock in some Jeremy Lamb and feel good about it. Jeremy Lamb is what you want. Dwight Howard's been streaking, guys. He just won me money in a head-to-head the other day, but... Bigs against Cleveland could be a problem. I always get nervous, and I don't really like Dwight Howard like that. I just played him because he was in a good spot on a slate that showed that I had to play him. Him and Gortat, I played them going against each other, and it, play, it paid off. He went off for like 40, 50, 49. He went off big. The game went into overtime. So the last three games, Dwight's been streaking. Now his price is 7K. There's no way I'm paying 7K for Dwight Howard. I just can't do it. Not against Cleveland. I do think, my, oh, if you saw my video, I was raving, oh, Marvin Williams is too cheap, too cheap, too cheap. And then what he did, he went out and put up 26, which is way, it's like seven, how much times value is that? It's like seven times value. Almost eight, probably eight times value. He's still too cheap, guys. Another guy is just too, too cheap. Besides this eight-point game, he's been in the 20s. Marvin Williams is too cheap, man. I think Marvin Williams is too cheap. Yeah. I don't have him, but I think he's too cheap. All right, let me move on. Let me check in with YouTube, see what y'all talking about, man. Boston plays at a slow pace. No Chalmers. I'm not up to Chalmers yet. Um, if Batum sits, love me some lamb. Of course, of course, of course. DDR safe in mid-30s, but his price doesn't make me comfortable getting mid-30s from him. Mustafa, happy Thanksgiving, man. What's going on? Bogdan price won't go up. I don't know why. It's a good value, though. Corey Joseph, revenge game. Nah, I'm not chasing that. DDR and Booker are my most consistent mid-tier players. I don't consider DDR mid-tier. He's like 8K. Almost. He's, he's expensive. Booker is cheap. I think Booker is too cheap. What up, brother? Lois Adams. How you doing, man? How you doing? Welcome. Happy Thanksgiving. I would have considered Joseph if he was playing in Toronto. Will Barton, yes. Love Will Barton. Dwight only at home, exactly. I'm not messing with Dwight right now. So let's keep it moving here. Detroit versus Oklahoma. On the Oklahoma side, Russell Westbrook is back, guys. He is back. In the last 10, two games, right? 67 and 70. He's back. Look at that. In the last three games, he's flirting with triple-double. One more assist, one more rebound. He'd have been triple-double. All right? That San Antonio was a tough matchup for him. New Orleans, easy. Golden State, easy. Detroit's going to be easy. Reggie Jackson cannot hold him. Please don't miss out on this. Please, please. He is back to last year version. They've been losing with them trying to do this whole split up. The, 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 bop, bop. There's no more of that. Westbrook is the man now. He's taking 20-something shots, 20 shots a game. If you look, we go back where well, he's been taking 20. But when he does, look how well he does. He took 25 shots. He got 50. Um. At home, man. Look at the splits. Such a big difference. 55 at home, 47 away. And then it's saying that it's a good matchup for him. Reggie Jackson cannot hold him. All right. Um, Paul George on the wing, Carmelo on the wing. All he has to do is – I just like Westbrook. I don't know how to rationalize it. A lot of people say he's too expensive. Why risk that? They'd rather pay off for some AD and Cousins, and I get it. But Westbrook is my boy. He's my favorite player. Is he? Him and Melo, my favorite players currently playing in the NBA. Well, I mean, it might be a bias. So if you're against Westbrook, you might want to look elsewhere for your for your pay up tomorrow. But oh, go, 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 touch on there. So um so Westbrook, very good feel about like it. Just do it, man. All right, let's keep going with Thunder, though. Let's not waste too much time on that. Felton, my boy, I always like Felton here. But with the emergence of Westbrook, Felton not getting too much run right now because Westbrook is on fire. Um, I see Robeson hustling, man. 
I see Wilson hustling out there. You got to check out some Paul George and Melo. They're both good players, all right? The only thing is they're expensive. I'm not paying 7 k for Melo to get in the 30s and low 30s and all that. I'll be so upset and disappointed. Paul George has been showing me more promise. Uh, he's averaging 45 for 8K, which is pretty good. And he got 50-50 in the last two games. When a player go back-to-back 50-point game like that, I get nervous because I, I wonder how much they could keep it up. Same could be said for Westbrook. He just had two good games in a row. You think he's do a bad game, but not at home. Coming from Golden State, pumped up like that. Hard for me to fade Westbrook tomorrow. Man. I just love Westbrook. Got a good feeling. It's just one of those gut instinct feelings. Just get Westbrook, get Westbrook, get Westbrook. And um, Steven Adams, I feel like he's, no, he's played 37 minutes, 30. If you're about it, you can go ahead and get some Steven Adams. I'm not really about it like that. All right? On the Detroit side, Reggie Jackson is a bomb. Everybody might not play. Um, Luke Kennard. Um, rookie. I don't really do the looks. Tobias, I'm not messing with that. Now with Paul George on the wing. The only person I really like like that is Drummond. You know why I like Drummond. I always like Drummond, but <sighs> nah, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not 9K tomorrow. Let him have a bad game and his price come down a little bit and then we'll take the good matchup another day, but not tomorrow. Drummond has expired with me. Minnesota versus Miami. I look at Minnesota. And I like a couple of things. Jeff Teague, averaging six times value over the last 10 games. He played them 37 minutes. He dropped 60 on them, all right? And he's been hot, 49, 35, 36. But Jeff Teague is so soft and such a liability, I find it so hard to put my U.S. dollar on Jeff Teague. I just can't put my USD on Jeff Teague. Can't do it. Can't do it. Same for Butler. He's been streaking. And just remember, I was considering playing him, I think, the night when he played um, Orlando. He was 74. He only dropped 39. I would have been pissed off. And that's what that's what I'm saying with these guys. They don't give me that confidence, man. They don't give me that confidence. So I'm going to leave him alone. I'm going to go on to Wiggins and Muhammad. Nope, 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 nope. Todd Gibson just had a big game, 44 points. Are we going to chase that? I don't know. Not me. Not me. All right. And then Anthony Towns should have a good game against um, Whiteside. Decent big man seems to take advantage of white side. Um, but eighty seven hundred. The only real big pay up I'm doing is on Westbrook because I got a lot of six K players that that's gonna get us forties tomorrow. All my six Ks, Hardaway's gonna get you forty. And when you see my other six K players, they're all gonna get you forty. It's a fact. All my six K players are gonna get forty tomorrow. Who's that Crowder? That's what I'm talking about. My line should be doing that right now, man. If Dark Wood could step up a little bit. I know my boy gave Santana hype right now because all he wanted was that touchdown from Jameson. He got it. So that's what's up, man. Watch, he's going to be in my inbox right here. Look, my line is definitely. Look, look, look. Everyone else is up to be changing values over. I don't know what he's talking about, but. Um. Crowder, touchdown, guys. I'm watching football simultaneously. I'm distracted. Uh, and that's it. Where, where, where were you? That's it. Uh, Minnesota. Yeah, Miami. I like waiters, man. I like waiters. I think waiters in my lineup, man. Did I Did I end up getting waiters? I did, right? Yeah, I like waiters, man. I'm, I'm going to take a leap of faith on some waiters. For, um, his usage as of late has been going up. He's playing big minutes. This game was a blowout. He went 0 for 10. I could forgive a guy when he goes 0 for 10. I'll be honest. I, I forgive you. You go 0 for 10 and you play in the NBA, I forgive you. Especially when you come back and you go 11 for 24. So you go 0 for 10, your team still feels confident in you. You go 11 for 24, you drop 40 points. But bigger than that, right? He's 5K, so six times value for that is 30. So outside of this, whatever this is right here, he did 39, 27, 28, 33. Which is good. All around the six time mark, five and a half, six time mark, 30, 49. And he played these fools already and he dropped 50 on them. All right. People are afraid to challenge Jimmy Butler's defense, but as of late, Jimmy Butler hasn't been really playing that much defense. If we look at the DVP tools for shooting guards, let's see where um, Minnesota ranks in the last five games, not season, last five games. Huh? It's saying that not to mess with them, but I feel good about it, man. I feel good about the um Deion Waiters play. I don't know. I don't know why. 
it just it gives me that feeling, man. Dion Waiters might be what you want. Um, Dion Waiters. Now, um, he's probably the weakest link in my lineup, but his price is just cheap. 5K for Waiters is something that I feel like you could just take. You know what I mean? But let's see how it goes. Let's see. let's keep breaking it down. I might switch out some Dion Waiters, but let's see. Let's see how it goes. If it's anybody that I feel deserve a look for that price range, um, but I just I, I like him. I like him. And then Miami, white side is always in play. You're gonna get forties consistently. But these last two games got me a little bit worried. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't know. I don't want to get a guy when he's in a bad slump. Dragic just had a big game, but. I don't think I'm going to go back there. I know that Jeff T can't hold him. And the last game they played, he dropped 32 only. That's kind of concerning. I don't like that. Richardson for 4,500. He's not getting a lot of minutes. They've been giving Winslow the minutes as of late. And every now and then, Winslow will blow up for like 26. But who wants to risk that? James Johnson. He's hot and cold. So... Just Waiters, man. I think Waiters is the constant in Miami, and that's the only person I'm really interested in from that game. And that's it. That's it for that game. So we got three more to go. I'm going to take a YouTube break. Um, I would have considered, no. Will Barton, yes. Dwight only What's up, DFS and fam? Jeffrey, welcome, man. Nice to have you. Westbrook ready to say it's his team. Yep, yeah, I agree. I got him. Steven Adams too cheap now that he's healthy. Yeah, but I got to see some consistency before I put my USD on them. Would you go somewhere else if Batum is not out? Um, If Batum is not out, then I'll take out both Lamb and Waiters out my team. And then I would um do some risks. I'll take one of those 3K guys we talk about, either Bellinelli or um Bellinelli, Marvin Williams, um. One of those guys, probably Bell and Nelly. Um, wait, waiters usage is 32. Yeah, exactly. Gotta love waiters, man. I like waiters. But I doubt that what's his name play. But if he does play, there's a couple $3,800 guys. And I'm going to look at them real quick for you. If he does play, then um, give some of these guys a look. They all were 3800 the guys that I was looking at. Um, Bell and Nelly, Shikum, Marvin Williams. All deserve a look. All right? Even the, um Bogdanovich. I'll probably throw one of those guys in and then pay up on something that was more valuable. And I'll look at it at the end. Let me just finish with this line real quick. So Phoenix versus New Orleans on the Phoenix side. All right? I was off. Hold on. Let's start point guard. Point guard, I don't want James or Euless, honestly. I don't need either one of them. Come on, Engram. You got to pull those in, man. I don't like James or Euless. Don't like either one of them. What I do like is Booker in the 7Ks, man. Booker in the 7Ks kind of yell at me. Um, but I, three out of the last four games, he's been in the 20s and 30s. <sighs> he's hot and cold. He's going back to last year version of Booker, which concerns me. So initially I was on Booker, but I'm off Booker now. Who I am looking more at is a guy that's $1,000 cheaper than Booker, TJ Warren. The last 10 games, averaging 36, just about six times value. That's what we want, okay? And look, 40s, 40s. He's playing big minutes, 39, 40 minutes. Um, this game against Houston was a big blowout. Uh, New Orleans is not going to blow them out like that. Um, there's no James Harden there. And then when we get when we move on again, we're back to 39, 46. So we see a common theme in TJ Warren. It makes me love him. It makes me love him. He is on the roster. Love some TJ Warren for that. And then Phoenix got some sneakiness going on when it comes to their bigs, okay? Because they... They love Bender. They play Bender quite a bit. Another cheap guy to consider if he's going to get the minutes. We just don't know. But I know, look, he got 34 minutes in a close game. They love Bender. The coach is trying to get Bender to, to establish so much that they end up giving Alex Len a DVP. Alex Len did not play that game at all. Only to get Bender 34 minutes. That's weird to me. I don't know where to take, how to decipher that. I don't know how to break that down, all right? Len didn't play. Bender played. Monroe's getting minutes in the 30s, 32 minutes. If Monroe, if I can guarantee another 32 minutes, Monroe becomes interesting. But I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. I don't get it. They got to feed these guys, man. Chandler got to get 30-something, what, 21 minutes. And even in 21 minutes, he still put up 26, 28. 
So Chandler might be worth that 4K because he don't he might get the minutes, but even if he doesn't against New Orleans, they'll need his size with those two big men down there. So I just I'm I'm just gonna stay away from it. And whoever got the guts, they'll either win big or lose big. I don't got the guts to do that. Like I said, my lines are always safe, safe to go. All right? Um New Orleans, love Rondo. Rondo's in a very good spot. We haven't really seen that 30 point game from Rondo that we know he can put up, but we know that Rondo got it, and he's had some tough matchup. OKC's been tough. San Antonio's tough. Denver guards been playing defense. Toronto guards play defense. He hasn't really had a good matchup yet, and now he does. Now he finally does, and a lot of people who trust in Rondo are going to be happy tomorrow again. I'm not. I'm not. If those, that's a risk that's worth taking. If I was making two, three, four lineups, I would pick Rondo in the second lineup. But I work tomorrow, and I don't have time to really invest in DFS like this. I'm just going to do one lineup that's real balanced that'll get me over the cash line in a triple up, and I'm just going to keep it moving. And Rondo doesn't really scream that to me. So it is some risk involved, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Rondo at that point. But he is, I do like Rondo, though, and I do encourage you, if you're into taking risks, go ahead and take one on Rondo. And then we move on to the bigs. You know how that is. Um, Phoenix, either one. Both of these guys should have big games. Um, I see a lot of sharks stack them on a nightly basis. Um, sometimes I'll do it if apparent value, like the Bucks game the other day was a great time to stack these guys. You put, if you had Bledsoe, Middleton, and Thorne Maker, you stack both of these guys, you still had a decent line. But there's nothing like that tomorrow that makes me feel like I have to do that. So um, I'm just going to move on, move on from that situation. But both of these guys, you know, in good matchups. Should have a good game. I can pick Anthony Davis over Russell Westbrook. I have the capability of doing that based on my lineup. Am I going to do that against Phoenix? No. No. I'm going to take Westbrook over Anthony Davis tomorrow, okay? Because as soon as the rebound comes down, first of all, Russell Westbrook is going to go for the rebound, all right? And if he doesn't get the rebound, whoever on his team get the rebound, they're giving him the ball. He got the ball in his hands. So let's, Jake, let's Crowder. Oh, Crowder killing the Giants. That's what's up. So whoever decides to play Russell, um, Anthony Davis doesn't have the ball in his hands that much. And being that it's a good matchup for Rondo, I think the guards get it going tomorrow, man. I think I don't know. I think I don't know how to decipher this Phoenix game, honestly. But um, yeah, that's it. I'm not spending too much time on that. The bigs, uh, the big Rondo Davis cousins is who I like on New Orleans. Fit them in your lineup as you see fit. All right, and um, keep it moving. OKC stacks too expensive. I would love to stack OKC, but it's too expensive to do that. Monroe's a beast, man. They just need to play him thirty plus minute. Chandler, old and lends a bum. I might can agree on that. I might could agree on that. Um, that's it. Got two more to do. Denver versus Memphis. The point guards in Denver. I like Moutier. I always like Moutier more than Murray. Um, for once, Moutier finally had a bad game when he came in against Houston. Houston to run you out the gym. I don't know what happened with Sacramento, but before those two games, we saw consistency. Not really. He's hot and cold. Um. But I would never play Moody without playing Murray. If I play one, I'm gonna play the other, just for that security. And it just—it's not the type of game for that. It's just not. You know what I mean? Barton though, but he's getting the start for what's his name, and he will get you anytime. Barton plays 30 minutes. Check it out: 36, 40, 37, 41, 34, 27. Portland on the wings is tough though. 38, 50. OKC on the wings is tough. So. Brooklyn, 30, 30. So the theme is Barton playing 30 minutes is what you want. With the injury to Millsap, he's starting to get that. If he's in the starting lineup, you got to play him, and I think he will be. Who are they playing? Memphis? Yeah, I think Barton is in the starting lineup. I don't see a reason for him not to be. But so much could change, and it's a late game, so we won't really know. But if Barton's not going to start, um, I'm not playing him if he's not starting. Uh, if Barton's not starting, I'm not playing him again. I'll have to um, – Barton matters, Batum matters. But once he's starting, then I, I feel comfortable. Anytime he starts, he'll, he'll have a good game. It's just a given. 
It's just what you want, all right? And um, that's it. Jokic, what's going on with Jokic? Oh, he departed midway. Keep an eye on Jokic. Yo, Jokic does not play. Fire this man up right here. Plumley. Please, guys, don't make the mistake. If Joseph does not play, fire up Plumley, man. Even if he does play, look, you see Plumley money, it's good. I always like Plumley too, you know. Always. Because Plumley come in and get you everything. Get some points, rebounds, everything. Plumley's in a good spot. I might just say, yo, play Plumley. Um, but if anything comes out and Joe Kitches out, people are gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna play Plumley and keep it moving. I'm telling you right now, if Joe Kitch does not play, play Plumley. You just have to. All right. But he got a cue. I think he'll play. I don't know. Um who else? Oh, Harris. Harris is worth some consideration. All right. He's he's averaging on the season five times value. The last ten games, six times value. And he's cons consistently around that 30 mark, you know, even in a blowout. When the game is close. What what are you talking about? What pillow? When the game is close, 30, 30. The thing that I don't really like about Harris is upside. He'll get me that six times value, but he won't exceed it. All my players that I have are liable to exceed that six times value. So pick six, touchdown. Come on, scrub. Um, All my players are liable to exceed it, not just meet it. So Harris, I don't like. I know Barton will go off for like 40. Harris, I've never seen him hit 40, so it makes me a little bit nervous. Chandler, I went with him with confidence, and he lost it for me. I went one for six, zero oh for three, not doing much. That's just whack. Fareed, another one. I mean, for three k, eighteen is decent, but who, who, who? Oh, Fareed didn't even play. He didn't play against Houston. He got a DMP, so careful. Make sure you know who's playing before you get crazy. On the Memphis side, um. I'm not messing with Chalmers for, for 5K. I know he just had another decent game. This 40-point game is fake, man. Well, he, he had what? 21 points? I don't know. I guess he could. He fills up the stat sheet, though. Right? He'll get you assists, rebounds. And when he does score a lot of points, that's when the bonus comes. I mean, six times value in one, two, three, four out of the last five games. That's encouraging. It is Denver. Um, I don't know. I don't like Chalmers, though. A lot of people do. I don't like it. I mean, he's getting minutes in the 30s, and he's not doing too bad for himself. Um, again, he's filling up stat sheets. I don't know if he's get if he's going to get that much that many rebounds against Denver, but he might. I don't know. I don't know how to call it. I'm just not feeling Chalmers like that. Not feeling Chalmers like that. Evans, again, continues to do well. He just dropped 40, but 7K is too much, too much for my... I don't want to risk 30 and 20 for him and, you know, even mid-30s for that 7K, that's not what you want. We liked him when he was, like, cheaper, right, in the fives. Even in the low six, then he started creeping up. Now he's in the sevens. And I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I like Evans for that price. I think he's a little overpriced. and I don't, I'm, not, I'm not ready and willing to pay up 7K for Evans tomorrow. Um, Parsons I like. Always like Parsons. He just had a bad game. I saw that. Couple bad games, but I just like Parsons. Parsons can get hot. Um, am I gonna play Parsons? No, but I do like him. And Gasol, I don't. Know, I can't call it, bro. Gasol is just Gasol, man. You just gotta get him on the right night. And he was supposed to kill Dallas. He didn't. So I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off about Gasol. Golden State, Chicago is a game I chose to stay away from because when Subpar teams play Golden State, it tends to be a blowout, all right? If I just click on any Golden State player and look at their games, okay, see, whatever, all right? But they kept the – Brooklyn kept them close. They blew out – I don't know, Philly gave them one. Boston did. So I guess they – I just don't like to pick on teams that, that play against Golden State. It's just not my style. They, they're good. They're running teams out the gym. They're back at home. 
And Chicago is not going to be able to keep up. Who would, all right, so who would I pick from Golden State? All these guys are overpriced. I'm not going to pick 10K Curry, all right? I'm not paying 7K for Klay Thompson unless, like, Durant's going to be out or something like that, then yes. If Durant's out, I'm playing for Klay Thompson. Durant, I'm not playing 10K for it. I don't even understand why they were pricing like that. Look at his numbers. He's not even living up to that. So that's weird. All right? And then um, Draymond for 7K is just not, it's not worth it. I don't see any Golden State Warrior that I want. There are some bulls that I would consider, but not against Golden State, okay? Like Dunn. I would consider some Dunn consistent for that six times value. But Golden State tends to, like, just run these guys out. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Marketing. I picked on Marketing. Valentine, another guy, he just went off again for, like, 40 two days ago. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Marketing, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Nope. Don't want to do it. I just want to leave that game alone. Late, late night hammer, leave alone. I just want to leave that one alone. All right. Um, let's see what y'all chopping it up about. Crowder effing me up. Crowder Jones, Rivers, Allen. Fire. I'm not sure what you mean. By that. Cousins just threw an interception and Giants scored. Yeah, I saw that. Pick six. I see why they always give Kirk Cousins a franchise tag. You can't give him a long time contract. Yeah, he sucks. You like Portis for 5.2 coming off the bench, possible blowout? Um, That's a good analogy, but we can't bet on a blowout. That's kind of weird, right? I'd say just fade that game, man. Why, why put your U.S. dollar on a possible blowout? You know what I mean? These are all NBA players. They're all good. Portis has never been in the 30s. Only when he came back the first couple of games, but then after that, he sucks. And there's been blowouts. Look, Utah game was a 30-point blowout. He only got 27. You know what I mean? There's been blowouts, and he's still not. Look, San Antonio was a blowout. He only got 27. So do I like Portis? No. I don't like Portis, Mamba. I, I, that's just that's just too much going on. You like Durant? Nah, I'm not messing with Durant and against the Bulls. It's just, it's, it's, I just think going, messing with that game is a waste. Messing with that game is a waste. So this is the lineup that I came up with, and that's how I came up with it. When I look at it, I expect 60 here, 30 here, 40 here, 40 here. I can, I expect 35, but I won't. I, I, I think he can drop. 40, but 35 against the Knicks. Lamb, 35. Wade is 30 to 35. Barton, 35 to 40. I feel real good about this line, man. Everybody there screams at me. Now, if um, if Barton doesn't start, just to give y'all some scenarios, what I wouldn't, wouldn't do, if Barton is not starting, for that 6,100, See, I would have to move stuff around. I wouldn't take it. If Barton doesn't start, then I would have to um I'll have to look at the whole slate. I'll have to look at the whole thing. You just have to follow the Twitter. The link is in the description. Uh you don't even have to be a member on Twitter to see my page. You just click the link and my lineup will be up on it. So if any news come out at Barton will not start, I'll change things. But he, I'm, I doubt that we'll get that news by before lock, and um, I'm pretty good. I, I think he will. With no Millsap, I like Barton anyway, so I'm just going to keep him in there. His upside is great. If what's-his-name does play, though, that's a better scenario, right? I would take out him and Waiters both. Move up Barton. That's if Batum plays. Right? I'll move up Barton, and then... um. I would have to do something like I have seventy eight hundred dollars. I would um, I don't think I'll get Booker for that price. Um, I wouldn't mess with. I'll probably at this point here mess with um. At this point, I would um. I will go ahead and get some Chalmers. At this point, I'll get Chalmers for five K starting against them. But I'll get Chalmers. Play Barton at the forward spot. And for 5,500, I'll probably get Dwayne Wade. For 
56. Oh, no, I wouldn't even get Chalmers. I'll get, I still have waiters. So, yeah, if, if Batum plays, I'll do something like this. I'll take out Lamb and put D-Wade in and keep the rest of my guys. So that's the Batum scenario. I like D-Wade, but I don't think Batum will play. They're not going to risk it, so I'll just stick with Lamb and be happy. Say, let that $100 go. So that's the scenarios, man. That's my line. Um, what happened here? I took out D-Wade. For waiters. So that's it. This is my lineup right here. Play it with confidence, guys. Please play that with confidence. All right. Um, and I'm out. Go ahead, like the video, follow the Twitter, Twitter for live for um pre-lock updates. I will not do a pre-lock live tomorrow. I'll be at work. All right, peace.